everyone. Welcome to Kryptonize. Today, it's just me. Just me. I want to talk to you about what's been going on in the market because I've done the research. I've been on TechCrunch this week, Bloomberg, Forbes, and NDTV talking about some of the things that I'm observing and I'm hearing and I'm witnessing firsthand. There's a lot going on in the market, and I wanted to make sure that you were given the information that I have in terms of what's going on in the market. So one of the things I like to do is to kind of walk my friends through this. So I'm going to walk you through this. Let's do the Dow because I think it more closely resembles the Dow. And if you zoom in, let's go three months because that's the one that I really like. Um, you could see here that Bitcoin was actually beating the, the Dow until about April 11th and then uh, stayed relatively close to it. You can see there's a peak here where Bitcoin started to trend down but still followed the peak. And then right about here, it started going really bad for Bitcoin. And the reason why it went bad is because of Luna. And if you don't know what happened with Luna, Luna was supposedly this algorithm-backed stablecoin. Without getting into the details, you could find them. Uh, there was a, a, a confluence of events starting from one major event that caused the stablecoin to depeg, and then it just went out of control, and just about everyone lost money on it. Well, that shook the confidence of people in the industry. So you could see it starts to go down and it doesn't recover. It stays about the same, you know, about down, Bitcoin about down 20%, the Dow up around 12, 13%. You see it follows, 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 follows. And then you see this downturn in the Dow, which relates to, I think, the inflationary data and uh, what's been happening um, in, in with interest rates. But you see an even steeper decline in Bitcoin, which absolutely relates to Celsius. Now, Celsius, just a few days ago, if you're watching this, uh, started to, uh, well, actually, they stopped entirely. In fact, if you're looking on the screen here, on June 12th, they decided they, that they were going to stop allowing people to withdraw. You see here, they put a pause on all withdrawals, swaps, transfers, anything. Now, this came out of the blue. And they probably shouldn't have done it, but they did, I think, to save their own ass. And for that reason, they have, have really suffered the wrath of everyone in, in the community. And that spooked them. And that's why you saw that decline. If we put that back on the uh, screen here. You can see I've highlighted in red pen uh, where these things have happened. So I want to break these things down, these, these three events. The first one is a general downtrend in the economy. And unfortunately, for people that are big Bitcoin maximalists and people that like Bitcoin like me, Bitcoin was supposed to be an inflationary hedge. Absolutely is not, at least not now. And the data shows that people are treating it like a, uh, an equity. It's not an equity. If anything, it's more like gold, but it's not following gold either. It's more following the S&P 500 and the Dow, which is really unfortunate because people were supposed to invest in Bitcoin as an inflationary hedge. Absolutely not the case right now. The second big thing was Luna, which we discussed. That caused Bitcoin to dip about 20% and thus the rest of the market 20% or more. Uh, and then finally, Celsius was kind of the final straw where people were like, uh-oh, this isn't contained to Luna. This could be pertaining to other things. Now, Celsius was invested in Luna, and I think that caused part of this decline in Celsius. Uh, so Luna was somewhat responsible for that. These stable coins have a big responsibility, and when they go down, they, they tend to take other things with it. Now, will this be the last thing? Absolutely not. I really look at this whole situation as a shakeout. If you look at the current generation of cryptocurrencies, let's call it Gen 2, a lot of them, I'd say 90% of them, are going to go away, and they should. 
because we need to replace them with better, more powerful, more valuable tokens to the whole ecosystem and thus the rest of the world so that this thing starts to replace fiat, which it will, mark my words. These things are very volatile. You've got to have an iron stomach, as I've said. And if you don't, I wouldn't be playing right now. I'd be watching, learning, educating myself every single day. You don't have to invest every single day. You don't have to invest at all. Just educate yourself on what's going on because this is the future. So some lessons here. First of all, the community needs to do a better job of policing its own. Somebody should have figured out that Luna's algorithm was flawed. It's actually somebody did follow, figure it out and, and, and uh, exploited it. And the community should have saw that, hmm, that could have led to Celsius' decline, and Celsius could have put some better preventative measures in place once the Luna fiasco hit. And it's not just Luna. There's other things that were ha happening with Celsius. So the lesson to you, the big one, is keep your Bitcoin, keep your crypto off of these exchanges, keep them off of these lending platforms, and just be very, very careful where you keep your cryptocurrencies, the best place is a cold wallet, even a hot wallet's fine, or let's say it offers more protections. But these things are going to continue to happen for the next two or three years. This is a safe environment for some that know what they're doing, and a very volatile environment for others because of all the scams, the frauds, uh, the experiments that are happening. I don't think, I think most people uh, are doing this for a good reason. I don't think Celsius or even Luna did it through, for nefarious reasons. I think these were experiments that went wrong. The next generation is going to learn from them, and we're going to see a, a much stronger set of stable coins, <clears throat> excuse me, and tokens going forward. So that's my summary. And uh, hit me up in the comments if you disagree, agree, what's been going on. I'm not going to try and predict, at least not in this video, what's, how long this is going to last. But um, since it's been following the economy, plus some other key events that have, that have happened, unfortunately, I think it should buck the economy because it's a totally different ecosystem, but it's not. It's going to follow it. So it's going to follow equities for, for quite the time. Uh, and with inflation skyrocketing, this could be a long road, folks. If you've had the problems with banks and inflation and anything having to do with the U.S. dollar or any currency around the world for that matter, you know how important crypto can be, but it's got to be the right crypto. So our friends at TetraGuard have decided to create what's probably generally considered an ETF with three tokens, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and PAXG. They've wrapped it all up with a rewards token that's built in and it's easy to buy. It's really quick at the website here. Now, the best part is you're getting rewards while owning this, and therefore you're making money just by holding onto it. How could you go wrong with this? Why would you buy Bitcoin, PaxG, or Ethereum separately when you can get them all wrapped together at the lowest prices with a rewards token built in? I can't think of a reason why. Can you?